Electricity is a powerful source of energy and a dangerous force of nature that cannot be controlled by conventional means. However, those that can have tapped into a unique power that few can withstand. Today, we are discussing arguably one of the best designed Electrotype Pokemon. It's the Electabuzz line. Welcome back, trainers, to my Ranger Logs, where we discuss the real-world inspirations of Pokemon and their deep layer designs. This is the Ranger Base, and I'm Ranger Rye. Electric-type Pokémon are really cool and popular in the Pokémon series. Heck, the series' mascot is even Electric-type. But have you ever realized how differently each Pokémon conducts or produces electricity? I found Electabuzz to be really cool in the way it does just this. But before we get started, I just wanted to encourage you guys to like, share, and follow this channel, as well as my social media pages linked in the description below. It helps this channel grow so I can keep making more content. Like all Pokemon lines, we shall start at the earliest stage. In this case, we have Alekid. Out of all this line's evolutions, Alekid is the most direct with its influences, as it's based on power outlets, specifically on the American and Japanese AC outlets. I should also note that this is the first time we have discussed a non-animal-based Pokemon here, but that doesn't mean that there isn't much to talk about, because Alekid's design is still really solid. First, its physical design has these large horns on its head, and yes, they are horns that resemble prongs of an AC plug, as well as its round body and bulky arms, all pulled together with its yellow and black design. Now, there are some interesting reasons behind its color schemes that I'll get into later, but it's pretty well known that most electric types will have some level of yellow in their designs, and this black and yellow does make it resemble a bee. However, due to Alekid's design being based off of an AC outlet, it might be safe to say that Alekid being black and yellow could be a reference to a warning sign that you would see near a power plant or any place that has large forms of power surging by. It's also fun to note that its round, egg-like shape was more prominent in its beta design, as well as its head looking less like an AC outlet and more like a coax wall plug that you would use for internet connections. This is actually a recurring theme in the Electabuzz line, so keep this in mind as we continue. There are two other neat little design choices about a Let Kid that I really love. First is its small little claw hands. If you didn't know, a Let Kid is the only Pokemon in its line to have these claws. And the way these claws are positioned resembles a universal three-pronged AC outlets. A nice little design choice for this energetic juvenile Pokemon. Speaking of energetic, do you know how a Let Kid generates energy? Most Electric-type Pokémon have some sort of internal power source or storage, but Alekid does something super unique. While it can absorb electricity from natural sources like thunderstorms, it will rapidly rotate its arms to generate static, allowing it to discharge the small amount of electricity it generates. This is similar to hand-cranking generators or a flashlight that you may have seen inside of emergency kits. These tools are super useful in emergency situations, but their energy doesn't last very long due to the need for continuous movement and generation. And if you have ever used one of these things, then you know that your arms will get tired fast the more you have to use it. Just like a Let Kid. Now, after enough time and training have passed, a Let Kid will then evolve into its more powerful form. Electabuzz is a stronger form of a Let Kid but it now trades in those large prong-shaped horns for small antennas, as well as losing those claws for actual hands. Design-wise, Electabuzz doesn't carry over too much of a Let Kid's power outlet design, probably due to this evolution's parts being created over three different generations. But I have been really excited to talk more about Electabuzz's traditional origins in Japanese culture. Before we continue with Electabuzz's design, I wanted to address the interesting duality that is the Electabuzz and Magmar lines. Both Pokémon and their new forms have been introduced in all of the same generations, making them a type of duo of sorts. Both also have serious roots in traditional Japanese culture as powerful beings, and if you guys would like to hear the story of the Magmar line in another video, then let me know in the comments below. Now while its previous form was based on an AC outlet, Electabuzz originally had more of a mythical design. Now notice the tiger stripes on its body, the horns and spiked fur on its head, and its beastly shape and sharp teeth. All of these combined were based on the Japanese creature known as an Oni, basically a troll, demon, or ogre based on the story. Oni were known to be beastly and large with sharp teeth and wearing a tiger-striped loincloth, explaining why Electabuzz has tiger stripes. 
As for the electric typing and yellow coloring, Oni were known for being common colors like red, blue, green, and white, and on rare occasions being black or yellow. And the electric typing comes from the Japanese Oni and God of Thunder, Raijin. Now, Raijin is an interesting story, but other than having lightning powers and an Oni design, the connections aren't too much more in-depth for this video. However, I will say that Electabuzz being yellow could also be based on the fact that statues and art of Raijin have been made using gold, thus giving them a yellow color and connecting the two just a little bit more. The inspiration from Japanese Oni and Raijin makes Electabuzz such a unique and interesting case for an interesting topic, the topic of lore and tradition versus advancement and nature, which you can start to see in Electabuzz's next form. The Electabuzz line is a very special case as all three of its evolutions were released in different generations. Electabuzz was a single stage Pokemon in Generation 1, not requiring any evolution or special treatment to be a solid Pokemon when introduced. In Generation 2, Electkid was introduced as part of the new breeding mechanic. Since then, its line took a slightly different approach to its design. And in Generation 4, Electabuzz got a serious upgrade in the form of a new evolution. In order to evolve Electabuzz, you must trade it while it's holding an item called an Electrolyzer. Once traded, Electabuzz will absorb the Electrolyzer and begin its new evolution. If we take a moment to read up on the Electrolyzer, its description says it's a box packed with a tremendous amount of energy. This implies that Electabuzz absorbs all of this energy in the trading process and becomes supercharged, allowing it to become Electivire. Electivire becomes much larger and beastly in this form, ironic seeing as Electabuzz was already based on a Japanese beast. With its more intimidating appearance, larger hands and two tails, Electivire seems to have gotten influence from apes and ape-like creatures. It's believed that this new form takes influence from large apes, mainly gorillas. However, there's another influence that originates from cryptozoology, the unfilmable beast itself, Bigfoot. Bigfoot, also known as the Sasquatch and its more northern cousin, the Yeti, have taken most of the influences for Electivire. With its larger size and new tremendous strength and move pool, Electivire is a real force to be reckoned with. Unfortunately, Electivire didn't gain the fighting typing upon evolution, which would have made sense due to its new size. However, it being a pure electric type does make quite a lot of sense. Electivire was created due to an overcharge of electricity during the trading process. As a result, its electrical power is off the charts. In its evolution, it gained larger horns on its head and these large tails which resemble industrial power cables. Apparently, it also likes to grab onto its tails to electrify its punches even more, which makes its thunder punch even more dangerous. Now, while it physically makes sense for Electivire to have gotten much bigger, it doesn't really explain why its fur has gotten so much thicker. Now, Bigfoot and the Yeti aren't exactly known for shooting lightning out of their fingertips, yet a lot of media portrays them as being able to do so but they are well known for having incredibly thick fur, which can be very helpful for an electric type. For Electivire, I believe that this thicker fur could be similar to conductive fibers, which are usually found in larger, thicker cables that help transfer electricity. These thicker fibers on their body could be used to absorb and conduct electricity much easier, which would explain why it's overflowing with energy constantly. Its power is so tremendous, it's said that a single Electivire could power an entire city for a whole year. Electivire would be perfect for emergency situations such as power outages and medical situations like powering equipment when not in a medical location. Pokemon has such amazing and unique designs that closely connect the Pokemon world to the real world. And I want to thank you all for coming by today to learn something. And if you really want to stay connected, consider following me on Twitter, Instagram, and Twitch, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We have so much more coming soon, and I can't wait to show it to you all. And as always, keep exploring, trainers!